Die comp setup is something that is pretty much difficult on any system, even with a uh, experienced IT professional and the PAX provider. Uh, so many things can go wrong between the system and the PAX that uh, it really is a very complicated procedure. Uh, before you get started, uh, there's really no point in doing anything until you talk to your IT person and ask them if you need something called DHCP or a static IP address. And they will tell you one or the other, and if it's a static IP address, they'll give you something called an IP address, subnet mask, and a default gateway. Uh, if you're using DHCP, uh, no worries, you're good to go. Next, you need to talk to your PAX provider, your DICOM server, uh, whoever is in charge of that. You need to get um, the something called an AE title, an IP address, and a port number. At a minimum, you need those three things. And this IP address is not the same IP address as they might have given you for your machine. If they gave you a static IP address, there's one that you need for this machine. And then on the PAX system, you need a uh, separate IP address that is the address of that PAX system. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you are in the middle of an exam, you'll need to go to that review, that four little things, and then click on the end exam and make sure that you're out of any exams. It'll go to the patient screen. Go ahead and just hit cancel. And then you're going to, next to this question mark, you're going to go ahead and go back to that system setup. Mine jumped to system, but you might have been left at another page somewhere, so you won't look the same. Make sure you click on system over here on the left-hand side. And then you're going to go over and click on the DICOM button. And you'll get a screen that looks really confusing and intimidating. So... Uh, you may already have a preset installed, but it's probably not right for your system. So um, you're going to uh, either change the current settings, but if you just got the system, don't worry about that. You'll go up and click the preset rename, create, or delete. We're going to create one. So we're going to click there, and this gives me a few options. One is to rename the current preset. I don't want to do that. I want to create a new one, create a new preset right here and click there and I'm just gonna write DICOM. Um, typically you're going to want to name something specific like your PAX system so uh, you know if it's called iCloud PAX or something like that you'll want to put that in there so when you select uh, to export you'll know what it is. So we'll go ahead and hit create new uh, and by the way if I want to delete a previous I can do it here but it requires at least one to be in there so you may not be able to delete it's already in there until you create your own. So we'll go ahead and create new. And then we'll go ahead and hit close. So now I've got two DICOM presets. The previous one where I did some testing on it. And then this current one where I'm just going to select the DICOM. And I don't want to rename, create, or delete anymore. Now I want to change the settings for this current preset. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And again, I have got all sorts of stuff that looks quite intimidating. Um, so the first thing I'll notice is all this stuff about the PC name. Don't worry about this at all unless your IT person requires it or the PAX provider uh, requires it. And generally, the only time you'd need that is in a large hospital environment or similar. Uh, the system port number, leave that alone. This is not the same port number that they gave you from the PAX provider. So most of the time you're going to be able, you're going to need to ignore these two. Um, and you really want to jump straight to the bottom where we have our network settings. And my network status says connected. I'm connected via Ethernet. Um, I have DHCP and all that. I, my system has an IP address, meaning it's on my network. And here's the MAC address. And you know, if you're in a hospital, they may ask you that too. If I want to change any of that or entering a static IP, I'm going to go click on that network administration. And here it's going to tell me everything uh, about my network. And you'll see it just looks like if you're familiar with Windows, a command prompt screen. Um, and then if I want to test that network, here's where I want to ping it make sure I'm connected. If I want to ch make those changes, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, this TCP IP properties. And this pulls up uh, the Windows box uh, from Microsoft Windows. And I chose obtain IP address automatically. 
This is something called DHCP. So if your network was using DHCP, uh, be happy. Just click this obtain IP address automatically and then go ahead and click OK. Um, if they gave you a static IP, that's where you're going to click here and type in all of this, all the stuff they gave you uh, before. But go ahead and just, I'm going to use obtain IP address automatically. Uh, actually, I'm going to cancel since I'm already set up. If you purchased a wireless adapter, this is where you're going to select wireless from there. Now, it looks like that's all I can do. But up here at the top left, you see a tab, um, and that's going to say servers and roles, and it's going to, again, look very complicated, uh, but we'll get through it. So um, servers and roles, here I've got my servers, and now this jumps straight to that test diacom. I don't want that. I want to create new. And here's where I'm going to enter all that information that the PAX provider gave me. So uh, I'm going to call this network that I want to use. So I'll just say, uh, I'm just going to say DICOM again. DICOM. And then I add my AE title that was given to me by the DICOM server. And mine is Brian MBP. My, the IP address that the person from the server gave me, and that is for mine, I'm going to enter that, and I am not worried about the DNS name here. I'm just going to go. They gave me a port number, my DICOM server, which is sitting right next to me, has the port number of 11112. Uh, yours won't be this unless you're using a Macintosh software called Horos. Otherwise, it's probably they, they'll give you something different. So now I've got this all set up. I've got uh, my AE title, all that stuff. I can go ahead and hit ping. And it says DICOM is configured correctly as DICOM server and is up and running. So I've connected to my DICOM server and I'm ready to go and I'm excited. Now, the um, problem is, is that uh, a lot of people have issues here. If you can't ping here, uh, but you were able to ping when it says this system and I don't have a network status or connected or I couldn't ping the server here, uh, this is what your local IT person would give you to ping, you have to be able to ping there before you can ping your DICOM. So up here, my ping, it says reply from, okay, but if it was not working, it would say timeout. Um, so if you're having problems with that, contact your IT person. So I'm gonna hold close there. And then again, go up to my servers and roles. And this ping is checking, the first ping was saying, am I on the network? The second one, this one here says, hey, can I talk to that machine over there? and let that DICOM server, and the DICOM server said, yep, you're all set. And so then I can go ahead and come over here, and I want to select my roles. This is also very important. And I wanna go down here and click modify. Right now, the roles are set. Um, to send to that other DICOM test server that I did. What these roles mean when I do something, when I export my images, it's saying, where do you want your images to go? Do you want to send structure reports? Do you have uh, secondary servers, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna go ahead and click modify. And now I'm able to make some adjustments. The primary storage SCP is DICOM, that one there. I'm gonna go ahead and click advanced. And how do I want to export the image site? Manual export, batch mode, so send them at the end of the study. When I click end, is it going to send everything together? Or send as you go. When I acquire image, do you want to send it over a network? That's really only good if you're always connected to the network or you're connected to wireless. Batch mode is nice because at the end of the study, it's all gone. But considering this is portable, you might want to just do manual export only because if you're on the road, you may not always have access to those things. Next tab over is called export options right here. Do I want to send 2D loops? And here's the 3D. Chances are you're going to leave that the same. Export frame rate. How do you want to export it? Do you want a specific frame rate to lower the size of images and so the files you go over? If you acquire a lot of loops, uh, this will make for a much faster export when you go over the network. This full size is going to be slow and it will take a long time to transfer over. If you're on a fast network and image storage isn't a problem, it's no big deal. But talk to your IT or PAC server to find out what's best there. Auto-delete, you want to delete the study after it's sent. 
image format. This is also very important and it's also very confusing. This is saying um, it's going to use compressed, uh, these, these transfer syntax, uncompressed, blah, blah, blah. Chances are you don't want uncompressed. Those are huge file sizes and it's going to be slow in transport. So generally, uh, for images, you can YBR JPEG compressed. And again, check with your IT person to find out if that's best. But the best part about this system is it's going to tell you what happens when you choose each format. This provides some image degradation, faster transfer, and smallest file size on packs. Uh, you can adjust the image quality versus by clicking change below. So you can change here the image quality. It says recommended is 85%. It's going to be a much smaller file than if you went with uncompressed, like a like maybe 5% as large as the uncompressed, especially in video clips. So um, my recommendation is JPEG compressed and then change. May and these defaults are actually pretty good. So you're good to go with that. And here also on loops, if you want to have higher quality loops, you can you can move it up here. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel there. So we're all set for that. And then uh, black and white images, you can use monochrome 2 or uh, format selected for color images, which is JPEG compressed. You can just leave that as is. Others. Um, export image compensation, these uh, loop timing, etc. You could take a look, and if, if there's anything in there that you want to change, go ahead. But in general, those uh, defaults are fine. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so now primary storage. Each time I save or export, I, do I want to go to that previous server? I want this DICOM one. SR Storage SCP. This is your structured report. You want that to go. So choose DICOM for SR Storage SCP if you are needing to send structured reports. Click on your advanced. Hey, do you want to send? Yes, go ahead and just keep them all checked. If, if you know, you're doing all those, it'll go with your patient report. I'm going to click OK. I'm not using any printers, uh, modality work list, MPPS, storage commit. Uh, secondary storage up here will take you, uh, if you want to send images to two different locations. So I'm, I'm done, and I can go ahead there. And my, I know my DICOM works. I was able to ping, and I'm ready to go. I checked over here my roles for storage. This is what's going to happen. Now, uh, you may have two locations to send to different places, and this is when you would want to have, um, you know, when you go to a different location and a different radiologist wants it, this is where you're going to go ahead and modify and choose your other PAC server to send that to. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm going to go ahead and close. I know it all works. I click OK, and then I modify the current because I made ch changes to that. I'm going to close. And next we'll get into exporting the images.